Alrighty, we'll try again. Um, so Melissa and Elise, just uh, just send me a message again if this is working now, and if not, we'll um, we'll just continue on and try it again at a later time. Up we go. Up yeah, we we're yeah, live. We're right. Okay, guys, we'll go back to the main track and go back to where we were going. Oh, we'll go yeah, this way. We'll head that way. Yeah, we'll go this way. Through the uh, this is a. Uh, an agave walk, I guess. Um, you can see the over here. You can see the agave samianas. These are hybrids, but they look very similar to the uh, real deal. There's just a few different colours mixed in because of the crossbreeding. And you can see here a flower shooting up, and that that will just sort of pause. Now we're going into the colder weather, and then in the spring when it warms up again, it'll keep going up. And you'll end up with a big flower spike like this. So these plants are agaves, are members of the asparagus family. And that's why they store their energy for a number of years. It takes about 10 years for these to flower. And then they shoot this, put all their energy into shooting up this great big spike. And agaves are what they make tequila out of. So what happens is, in Mexico, they come along and they chop that top out when it's about that long. And then they leave that for, I'm not sure if there's anybody from Mexico, you can send us a message and tell us. But I think they leave it for a while for all the, for the plant to swell in the base, in the heart. Then they come along, chop all the leaves off and they roast and cook that and get the juice out of it. And that's what they make tequila out of. And... Over here we have your classic ponytail. A lot of people grow these in their fernery, but actually they love the sun outside. And uh, they'll, there used to be forests of these in Mexico. Um, from what I've read, there is no longer any forests in Mexico. They've been collected by people all over the world in days gone by, and there are no forests anymore. So there's a mixture of agaves, a few cacti through this trail. And then down the bottom here, we've got where we let the water run and it just soaks away. Someone was asking about the saguaros as well, Dad, if we want to make our way that way as well. Uh, yeah, we can go down through here, I think, John. Great. Get to the saguaro. Going cross country? It's not really the right country for saguaros. And why is that? But we do have a big one. Not as big as they grow in the wild. So we've just now cut across into our North American section. And you've got some ferro cactus here. Mexican fence posts leaning dangerously. Agaves. Agave flower stalks out here with bulbs on them. And then here, we'll start off with this. So this is a baby saguaro, and you can see it's quite fat already and getting quite big now this patch of the garden here is deep sand and this is where they do really well and so do the pachycereas pringly eyes the pachycereas pringly eyes are the fastest growers these are very slow but when we get a really good year here we can get around a meter of growth in these young plants between half a meter and a meter and that's an exceptional specimen there. That's only around 10 years old. From when it, 10 years old from when it was planted out, it was about five years old when it was put in the garden. And then we've got a smaller one over here. And then John comes around to here. This is our big saguaro, I guess. 
It's probably 60 to 70 wide. And if I'm nearly two metres, that's probably close to six metres high now, I guess. But this plant's been here since uh, 2004. And there are other plants in the garden that are as big as that one behind John there that are exactly the same age but on the heavier soil. So they've hardly grown at all. And we'll go around and we'll have a look at the Pringley eye. Um, I think they call them cardon in Mexico. El cardon or something like that. Or the elephant cactus. Because they get so big. Some ferro cactus potsii here. Or potaceae, however you want to pronounce it. And we've got some little mammillarias. John might be able to zoom in here and show you some flowers. Here and the one, the species back there. So the mammillarias do really well here. We have the temperature range that you can grow some of them out in the open garden without shade. And then just behind John, if he comes around this way, whoops, he's caught. Uh, one of the really nice agaves, agave, um, I'm thinking truncata, but it's, it's variety truncata, uh, parii. Variety truncata. So it's one of the only ones that grows up on a stem as it ages. But at, when it's at this stage here, it's an absolutely beautiful plant. And then over here is the elephant cactus. And you can see the pups on here. They've only been growing here for about five to six years, John. Yeah. And they're already this big. Now this plant is half the age of the saguaro that you were, we were looking at a moment ago over the back. So you can see that they grow much quicker and they'll shoot pups much earlier in life. We haven't got any uh, pups on our big um, saguaro yet. So hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll get to see some. Okay. Uh, some big clumps of mammillary compressor, longer spina there. And they're just reaching that age where they'll implode sometimes. You get a bug or something gets in there and they rot. And you have to chop them up. Will we weave back through to the orange trail and just show them yeah. the difference between the saguaros now and the Pasacana to Yes. Yeah. Good idea. Back through here. Back into the wild. Can you talk about this um, Myrtillo hybrid as well? Uh, it's not a hybrid, it's a Myrtillo cactus. And uh, I don't know which one it is. I'm not an expert on Myrtillos, but it's not Geometrans. It's one of the other ones that grows much thicker and taller. Geometrans is the one over here. Metrosins is the one over here. And you see it's a more of a rounded lower clump with less thick arms on it. And, but this one grows up uh, with a very thick stem and it just keeps getting quite a bit thicker and it gets much higher. A very good plant for landscaping. It's gorgeous. And even for small pots, very hardy. And they also use these, both of these varieties for grassing because they have a lot of vigor. So we're just going to go off the beaten track here. That and track we're coming on is being created by mountain goat people. <laughs> um, what is your temperature range? It is amazing how you can grow all of them outside unprotected. 
like cactus caffeine. Um, we do have some um, some covered areas as well that we'll show the guys later. Yes, well, we our temperature at the, today is around probably reached 17 degrees, and uh, the coldest we get during the winter can be minus 10, but we haven't had with climate change, I guess or climate shift, whatever you want to call it. We get down to about minus two, minus three on the coldest mornings, and it's only the odd morning of the year. Um, when I was, I'm in my 60s now, and when I was a child in this same area, we used to get very cold mornings of up to minus 12, and we'd get, you know, 10, 20 in a row, and the, the channels and the little pools and ponds would all be frozen over. And sometimes they'd stay frozen through the whole day and they'd get quite thick. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore at all in this area. So there's definitely been a bit of a shift in the climate. Uh, our hottest days uh, can be 45 plus, and but our normal range is probably from around the 15 degrees during the day to... 35 during the day yeah that's our normal range which would be maybe half our year or three quarters of the year and cacti grow at their best when they have water and day night a night temperature that's 10 to 12 degrees and a day temperature around the 25 to 30 30 32 something like that and they just grow like crazy so we've had really quite a warm autumn and quite a bit of rain and you can see that all the plants are pumped up and growing really well and um just convert that to fahrenheit if you're in the states there all those temperatures are in celsius uh yes so uh, someone just asked um what kind of gloves we use we use mostly welding gloves to handle cacti with big spikes I prefer to use my hands, but John likes to use gloves. Out to our right up there on the hill is the lookout that's been created. Look over our new area out here to the right. And then this is what we call the Orange Trail. And this was started in 2006, so 14 years ago. And this is mainly hybrids that I've bred from the first years from that um, Mama Pasacana that we were looking at, the big one with the big arms on it. So majority of the plants out here are hybrids from that plant. And um, I won't bore you with technical details because there'll be very few people who care about the technical details. But basically in those early days, I just had what, that big one to Shekii flowering. And I had a lot of what we call the bivias, which are these sized plants here. I know they've changed the names now to Echinopsis. Totally confusing to everybody. But I had a whole lot of these in different um, forms and different colours and that, and um, had some what we call um, mid-range large Lubivias, which are fatter. I'll show you some of those in a moment. And they cross with that particular plant and maybe some of the other trichocereus. And we got basically everything that's in this trail except for the odd big tall plant. And the cerezas, of course, along the top over here, well, they're not from that plant. So up the back here, just to give you an example, is one of those hybrids. And you can see how big it is, multi arms. And this plant has only been, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> this is common for dad to get a sneezing fit so over here if 
John comes up, we'll show you a flower. And you can see the bees here. This is just opening. And you can see how excited the bees are because there'll be beautiful brand new pollen here. And uh, they're going to fight about who gets it. Um, Brad Drysdale just um, commented, I've got some seeds crossed with JP3 heads, which is that one. JP3 heads is down there. Yeah. We'll show you in a minute, Brad. Hello, Bradley. Beautiful. Oh, Bjorn just tuned in. Bjorn from Germany. Hello, Bjorn. Is that Bjorn from Backpacker Days? Yeah. Hi, mate. How are you? On the left here is a big patch of San Pedro. And when this was in flower, one of our very, probably our top rated videos was shot here. And it had, well, over, it's heading towards 2 million views now. So I think 6 million. 6 million. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. It just keeps going and going. It was just maybe 1,000 to 2,000 flowers on this all over. It was just basically white. Okay, so... I think we'll walk up to the middle, John. Yep. And maybe in talking about the hybrids, we can show them what we're trying to do with crossbreeding. For example, you've got the Sansevieria to your right that's fallen over, um, which has a coloured flower. Serencia. Serencia, sorry. Sansevieria is a different thing altogether. Well, that's uh, why you're here. Another one here. See, yeah. we were talking about the roots before. You can see how shallow the roots are. For a plant this size with shallow roots and then you get a lot of rain and the weight is too much on the top and it leans a bit and they go down so what i suggest to people to do is what we're in the process of doing is putting some big rocks around them um i had big rocks around the one over here i thought big enough but the plant got so heavy and leaned in that direction and went over you can see where it was sitting on its back but the weight was forward must have been forward and it went over the other way so there'll be a lot of cutting here and a few plants to go out in the new garden Bjorn says hi and we've got uh, Isabel Els from uh, Portugal tuning in hi Isabel and so when you look around here you can see this is a hybrid from the same all these plants that I'll just quickly point out we're from the same batch of seed so this plant here, a lot of these have numbers and they're our breeding numbers. So for instance, this is a monstrous Tosh uh, eye cross because it came from a Tosheki eye. It probably is a trico um, like Psychonaut or one of those other ones that I have here that have been bred here. It's probably a cross with one of those. And so it's not quite as thick but as it's aging now, we're seeing that it's really starting to thicken up and it's going to be one that maybe will grow several more meters high. Um, when we call something monstrous, what we're talking about is that you can see that it shifts. See how it stops the ribs here and it just misses some spines and then it makes another rib. And then the other one curls around and it's a general thing and then away it goes growing again and then if uh, John comes around this side you can see in here where it's just missing and dropping and starting ribs again so this is one of the ones that we're doing a lot of breeding from because it has a very more open and big flower compared to what the um, Tosheki eyes normally do and so we've done a lot of color breeding with this one and then you can see down here some of the small ones and how they got the thicker spikes on them from the Tosheki I cross, but they have a um, much lower form at this stage. But we can't tell until they're probably another 10 years old what exactly they'll do size-wise. Behind me here you can see 
a plant that came is a F1, which is first cross, and it came from Dawson's in Bendigo in Victoria, so about two hours from here. And this is a first cross from the plants of theirs that came from the wild in the mid 30s, I believe. And then these are crosses off those. So there are our F1s. And there's another F1 behind you here that fell over and lost its entire center. But you can see that all the pups have shot now and um, it's growing away again, going to be a big plant. And then John, on this one here, you can see the form of the Tshekii once again. It's a Libibia cross uh, with the Tshekii. And you can see that it's got the thickness as it's aging. It's getting very thick. But because they don't have a really woody center spine, they will lay down on the ground. And when they go to this process of lying down, we'll find one that's in the right spot at the, in a minute. And you'll see it's starting to lie down and we'll show you one where they just, sometimes it just snaps across here. Someone was asking, uh, what if it skips areoles in reference to the monster? And are they all from the one OP to Shirky Eye? Yeah. Yeah, majority of them are. Not every single one. As I said, that one there we were just looking at isn't from that, and neither is the one over there. So we have about 10 Dawsons in spaced around in here. But all the other plants have come from two seed pods. One seed pod in the early, it was the first one, and then the next year I got another seed pod, and that they're other JPs. So you'll see that that's a JP there from the first year. But there are smaller JPs, which don't have numbers yet, which are oh, over here. Only about this big, and some of them are bigger, but only about this big. So there's about 50 JPs at the moment of various types. And then over on the side over there, we can see some smaller ones that have been more slow growing. They're the same age as this, but they're a little slower growing. Um, basically because we had a drought here for 10 years, 12 years, and then in 2012 we had a good rain, and then after that it, these plants were just planted around that time. We've had several years where it's been drought again, and then we've had a really good rain year in the last couple of years. We had a good wet winter last year, and a lot of the growth that you see here today, that happened last year. So for instance here, This one here has grown this much in the last month and a bit. And I know that because I took two pups off this one for growing on to make sure I never lose it because it's something special. It's what we call a, um, an aurea, which means it has a yellowish tinge to it. It's not a proper variegate because variegation is green and yellow, but the whole plant has um, a shine. So during certain time of the year, it'll go more yellow, and then other times of the year, the green will come back into it. But you can see down the bottom here where the yellow, as it ages, you can see the yellow just as a tinge through it. And then if John comes around this way on what you're looking at, you'll see a proper green all around here maybe. And just a little bit more of that monstrose that's a little bit yeah. easier to see here as well. This is another plant, but it's not its not doing as much monstrose as what the 24, JP24 does. Mm. And uh, this here is uh, what we call Jim's monster. So it's one out of all these 50. That's, to give you an idea... That's how it's really thick. It's always been really thick and a big plant and growing vigorously. And so, and it, it sets seed pretty well. And now it's got pups. These pups only came this year and you can see how big they are already. And that's just in six months of growing. And um, Grant, Nico, uh, what's your favorite plant to grow, Jim and John? I like the trico cerise, but I like all cacti. I don't really have favourites. If you turn around to the back there, you know, you can see an exceptional 
um, trichosereus chilensis, they call them. And uh, the spines on that and that plant is probably as good a specimen as you'll get anywhere. Um, I guess if I come over, you'll be able to get an idea of the height of this. You know, it's getting quite big and tall now. Um, they're noted for these short, really, or shortish, really strong central spines. And then they spread out like spider legs, I guess. But that's the feature of a Trichosereus chilensis. There's a lot of dispute about the naming of these things. I don't get into that, I just grow them. And we try to be as accurate as we can with names, but there's so much interbreeding taking place in different parts of the world that it's really hard to define what exactly is what. Um, so for Bradley, this is the three-headed one. It's beautiful, isn't it? Once again, a really nice, big, thick body. Is that a little bit of variegation on this side, Dad? Just up the top here. Uh, maybe could be any could be any number of things. I know some of the plants they'll go a little yellowish from the extreme heat that we've been having in the last couple of years, and they do strange things. So these are the JPs that we've been talking about, and these are the first big ones. Uh, the sound is evidently quite a long way behind the video. Thanks for that, Cody. Thanks for letting us know. Cody's tuned in as well. She's been with us the whole time. So this is Jim's drink, because this plant flowered when it was about that big and about that high. And it's a Toshekii cross from Mama Pasa, but it crossed with something completely different to the other JP. So this came as one of the freak plants in the bunch. So this is what all us trichocereus seed growers look for. We grow a thousand seeds to find one true freak. Uh, we've been fortunate here to have three or four freaks out of a thousand. And um, this plant may be, this pup on here may be going to um, become a crest. We're not sure, but it may also just become two heads. So only time will tell, probably the next six months. And then you can see this plant over here, how big this is. And this just gets covered in a mass of yellow flowers when it flowers. Red flowers over there. And what we're always, what I'm always looking for when I'm breeding is plants with exceptional flowers but also big, robust frames because I've got a friend, Joylene, and Joylene may or may not be tuned in, but she, like me, likes big, strong plants. So, Yeah, I can see the video lagging. I don't think there's much we can do about it, unfortunately. We'll just continue on and... So they get getting the sound later than the... Yeah, the video is lagging behind the audio by the sounds of things. Right. So over here is one of our young Dawsons. And you can see the plant is much behind Mama Passa. This is an F1 from Dawsons that I planted several years later than the one over there. And uh, it's really growing and taken off and you can see up the top it's got that furry snowy hairy sort of top coming to it this plant hasn't flowered yet so we're hoping that maybe this next year it'll flower and then another one over here that's the same age as the mama pasta but it's only been flowering for two or three years and it's propped because we had really bad storms a couple of years ago and we were just too scared to leave it because it's got so much weight so we just left the, the props there 
Now we're getting into some of the other JPs, or oh, these don't even have numbers as yet. This is um, this is one I've named after John because he's so tall. I called it Big John. Uh, you can see the spikes are really robust on it, so that's coming from the Tshekii. And then a Libivia, it has an enormous, and then something really special, guys. We've got the horned, I didn't even know this. I don't know whether we'll be able to get a good shot, but the horned spider here, if you can come around this side, John, you'll bet they'll be able to see the, the horns on it, if you can. We had one photographer came here for several years trying to catch these little guys with their horns. It took him about four years before he got here at the right time of the year to get the shot. Mm, no, it's not going to focus on it. Oh, we might have to get a shot of that and put it yeah, up we'll online. Yeah, we'll get a photo. With the camera. So these are the first of the JPs here that were planted out. So over here... Shot yeah, if I get behind, yeah, that's yeah. perfect. This is JP1, and this is uh, you can see that it's crossed probably with an Echinopsis or something. And what it what has changed in the attribute of the plant is that they shoot a lot of pups around the base, just like a um, a more the ordinary trichocerises do, where they shoot up from the bottom. And so you're getting these pups coming out of the base, whereas the plants we looked at over there, they have a stem that goes up and then they shoot out. So these plants do that to start off with. And then now in latter years, they're shooting from the base. And they've still got these very big spines, but a lot of these, the flowers are actually better than the wild species, the original species. Well, I think we'd better wrap it up there, Dad. Um... I think the audio and the video being out of sync is getting pretty um, pretty long lags now. So thanks for everyone for tuning in and asking questions and we hope you've enjoyed the cross. Um, hopefully this stream through to visit Victoria on the, on the second try. Um, we'll try and do this again soon. It's been really fun to be able to interact with the community and just looking through the comments as we went, I just saw a lot of people even connecting with each other during the feed. So thanks for everyone who tuned in and we look forward to having everyone back once we can open again. Thanks guys. See ya. See ya. Done? Yep.